great points about that that I want you to hear. So I'm going to get him on the on the air here just a little later. Right now, uh, we are honored to be joined by State Representative Paul Kurtman, who has announced an exploratory committee to run for United States Senate and uh, obviously might face some opposition in the primary, but would like to run against Senator Claire McCaskill. Paul, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mark. Great to have you in here. Thank so, you. so I guess you know right off. Somebody might look at you and say, "You know, the Senate is a real mess." But, but, in, but what I would say to you is, we need more people who have the strength of their convictions in the United States Senate, and we wouldn't have some of the damn problems we have now. I would totally agree with that. Absolutely. So, so what's your observation on this health care mess we've got right uh, with, with voting? No, you know, voting down repeal, voting down repeal and replace. I mean, you meant you mentioned it. They've they've screwed it up. Yeah, I, right now it's kind of a spectator sport right now. Like for everybody who's not in D.C., who's not engaged in all the negotiations that are going on, I'm just hopeful that ultimately, whether it's one bill, two bills, three bills, I'm hopeful that ultimately the Republicans wind up keeping their promises and we just get to a repeal and that any laws that wind up being written or introduced that the president signs just empowers our consumers that, so that way uh, people can make their own health care decisions rather than having to rely on the – yeah, well, and, force and, of the government. and your your potential opponent in this, Claire McCaskill, along with Chuck Schumer and all the other Democrats, I've said it before. There's no way that group ever comes to the table as long as Obamacare is the law of the land. What what is their motivation to negotiate when they've got a bunch of people across the aisle who can't seem to control their caucus? Yeah, I think that's a great observation. I mean, if if Obamacare, if we have to start from scrap, right? If we totally repeal Obamacare, then they have to come to the table. Because, I mean, they they have a direct interest in making sure that whatever is brought uh, up and sent to President Trump's desk is something that they've had a part in. If all we're just doing is just negotiating uh, between Republicans how we're going to scale back Obamacare, there's just less incentive for the Democrats to be at the table. I, I heard this uh, earlier today in part from Rand Paul. I think it's a good news that more Republicans actually support a clean repeal. It is disappointing, though, that many Republicans – who promised to vote for a repeal, already had voted for this repeal, chose this time not to vote for it. He said, I'd like to change that, but the first thing you're going to have to do is send me some more Republicans up here who think the way I do. I would include you in that uh, that pile there. So that, that'd probably be a fair assessment. <laughs> you'd be on the short list, wouldn't you? Yeah, I like it. That's good. Um, I have to ask this because I know that uh, you, you were active duty and you served your country. Um, this whole transgender thing that came up, a lot of people think uh, it was an unnecessary distraction on the part of the president. I said earlier that I thought it was less about the ability of someone who considers themselves to be born into the wrong body to go on the field of battle and, and perform as it was about the fact that the American taxpayers pay in nine or ten or eleven million dollars a year because people are signing up to join so that the taxpayer will pay for their gender reassignment surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that the taxpayer should pay for gender reassignment surgery. I don't think the taxpayer should have to pay for any like I don't care if it's a nose job or gender reassignment surgery. I don't think taxpayers should have to front the bill for that. And I have a hard time with elective surgeries of that nature. Um, uh, nose job or sex reassignment, uh, being part of our appropriations to a military budget when uh, we certainly have a lot of things that we need to be spending money on. I read an article recently about um, uh, the U.S. military having to go visit um, – Aviation museums, trying to find parts. Parts, yeah. right? So I, right. I don't, I don't think that we should be putting uh, money towards um, elective cosmetic or sex reassignment surgeries when we have to keep our combat pilots in the air. That's and we a need great, money for that. That's a great point. I mean, th they tried to diminish the amount of money that was going toward it every year by saying it's only a tenth of the cost of a single F thirty five fighter. That's all we're spending on this. But you've got F sixteens that they can't find parts for. And mm -hmm. like you said, they're having to go to boneyards and salvage parts off of old planes. Um, all because of this ridic these ridiculous constraints with sequester that we put this country under a few years ago. The military suffered the most through all that, not mm -hmm. the entitlement programs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I just I just think that we have to make sure that our policy is centered around sound fiscal and financial principles that actually make sense and in this case help our military remain combat ready and mission effective so so combat ready mission effective uh did you serve with anybody you knew to be transgendered 
No, I uh, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Of course, on, when I was on active duty, it was from 99 to 2003. And then okay. I stayed in the reserves in one component or another uh, until about 2009. Um, and not that I'm aware of. So so it would have sort of been a don't ask, don't tell policy at that point. Anyway, That's right. B- That's before right. Obama took uh, took office. So maybe it, uh, it's irrelevant. Do you think it knowing that impacts uh, unit cohesion and effectiveness? It absolutely does. When I was stationed in uh, Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii, and I was an infantry Marine, so my whole job, I only worked and and trained with men uh, primarily. Um, But at Schofield Barracks, I remember when I was in Hawaii, Schofield Barracks is also in Hawaii, and there was an issue in this case of just women deploying to the field for long periods of time with men. And there was uh, cases of young women prostituting themselves out to male soldiers in exchange for, I don't know what, but I just remember having read about it in some military articles at the time. And so I, I think whether it's uh, men and women in the field together for long periods of time or in a case where you have a man who now wants to be a woman, I think that that even further would complicate some of the issues. Yeah, cer- certainly bring up new issues uh, on, on top of that, although they claim it's been the, the rule now for a couple of years, I guess, under Obama. Well, and, I, and I do want to say, I think President Trump, I mean, regardless of whether or not people agree he was uh, he uh, made his announcement the right way over Twitter, I think it's refreshing, though, that he went to – the military and talk to the brass, talk to the generals, talk to, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that we have the highest morale in the most uh, combat ready military fighting force in the world and uh, his decisions being made based on what they said. Now I know his family and the way things, the way that he campaigned was very transgender friendly. And so he's not going with what his family wants to do. He's not going with what he would like to do. He's actually consulting the military to make a decision that best benefits the military. Right. And and the media by off that subject i'm not trying to make you answer this i read an article here i've got it here in front of me where the media is blasting him because this was supposedly the joint chiefs were caught off guard that was the headline of the story but if you read five paragraphs down i have a five paragraph rule if you read five paragraphs down down you learn that it's not that he didn't consult with them on this issue it's just that they weren't expecting his announcement yesterday via twitter Right, but like, they but they would lead you to believe the the headline would lead you to believe the Joint Chiefs had no idea that this topic had never been brought up. But that's not the truth. Right, there had been discussions about it, and then the decision the president made a decision. Just yeah. just just media spin like normal, right. and, and and I I highly doubt that uh, um, that this is an announcement that would be made uh, without some degree of discussion. And I and I think that you know now he's going to have to follow the the correct process to actually implement a policy like this um so maybe his announcement some people might say it was premature just because the policy hasn't been written yet but i think that the point is is that the decision's been made and how the dis- decision was made i think is actually refreshing that the president would actually consult the brass before actually coming to a decision on his own it's been what a uh, couple of weeks now since you launched this effort to what kind of reaction have you gotten around the state uh, an extremely strong show of support. Good. Um, I'm ha- I'm going to have an event on uh, July 29th, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at Orlando's off of Dorset in Maryland Heights. Um, there's going to be a large crowd there, and uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get up. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to have some remarks that talk about uh, the reason why I think we need to a replace Claire McCaskill. Um, things that I see going on in the nation that I think that conservative leadership can help change and uh, actually better represent the people of Missouri. I think the people of Missouri overall are much more conservative than Claire McCaskill would like sure. to believe. Sure. Give us the details of that event again. Orlando Gardens, is that the one in Maryland it, Heights? It, it's going to be at Orlando's at on off of Dorset in Maryland Heights. If people right. want all the information to that, they can go to kurtmanformissouri.com and all the information's right there. And show up. And um, I'm sure if you've got a list of the reasons why we need Claire out of there, it's probably going to be a lengthy speech. It's not. So I'm going I'm to abbreviate this. Now, I, I mean, I'm taking my red pen to this speech to make sure that it's not too long. But, um, but I think uh, I, I just want to be very clear and upfront about my intentions here and uh, the expectations over the course of this exploratory effort. So, you know, my perception of your political career so far has been one of someone um, who's gone to Jeff City, uh, talked the talk, and then walked the walk when you've gotten down there in terms of the things that you believe in and it, it is your core beliefs. When, when you look at, after serving in Jeff City, seeing how things operate down there, when you look at Washington, D.C., and you think about what you may be wading into up there, and you hear Donald Trump call it the swamp, I think of the swamp as the fact that it's not just a bunch of Democrats and media who are 
causing him problems. It's establishment Republicans who are causing him problems. People who who don't want an outsider up there changing things. I, th- I think that has a lot to do with it. I also think that we have Republicans, and you see these in every level of government. Republicans, and I'm sure the Democrats have the people on their side, but you know, sometimes you have Republicans who are much more Republican or conservative as far as their campaign rhetoric goes, but then when it comes to actually policymaking, when they have to be accountable for their vote, right. they try to be much <sighs> more careful and, and kind of straddle that line because they don't want to offend anybody and they don't want to stand up for anything. And I think that we see a lot of that, and I think that that's what the American people are sick and tired of. I think that's one of the reasons why Trump was so successful with people across this nation because he just wasn't buying into that. He wasn't part of that. He was just very upfront about what he believed. And I think since he's been in office, he's been working really hard to actually follow through on a lot of things he said he was going to do. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, Let me get off the subject of your Senate run for a minute and talk about uh, Jeff City. In the next legislative session, uh, we've been told by some folks uh, here in St. Louis County that there may be an effort to put on a statewide ballot the idea of some sort of a merger of county and city. Have you heard anything about that, and would you stand up and fight against an effort like that? Yeah, I I don't know who would sponsor that bill. Um, if there's an effort underway to do that, I'm not I'm not part of that conversation. Probably because they know I'm not for it. Right, could could <laughs> I, be. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it would be a good idea. I heard a, a friend of mine who. Uh, um, says no merge without a purge, you know, and I think there, there are, if people want to go down that road, there's so many different things you got to check off the list, um, certainly cleaning up the city government of St. Louis. So I don't think that it's a, a good idea. It's not a bill that I would vote for because I don't think the whole state should be voting on whether or not St. Louis County and St. Louis City um, come back together. I think that that should be specifically left to the voters and to the residents of St. Louis County and St. Louis City. Well put. Uh, g- give us the website one more time for the Senate run. Sure. Kurtmanformissouri.com, C-U-R-T-M. M-A-N for Missouri.com. Kurtman from Missouri.com. You can get on there and find out more about the rally that's coming up uh, Saturday. Paul Kurtman, thanks so much. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate your time. Good luck with everything and keep us up to date on that. Uh, we're going to get to a break. 314-969-9797. We've still got those Alan Jackson tickets to give away coming up here in a couple of minutes. We'll, we'll talk more about Senator Graham and some of his observations 